Microsoft just released the formula Copilot in Excel. In this video, I will show you exactly how you can use it for finance and financial planning analysis. Stay here because by the end of this video, you will have a look of around 30 ways to use this new AI formula directly in Excel for finance and financial planning analysis. Let's start. The Popilot syntax is simple. If you just go to a blank Excel and type equal Copilot and open brackets, you will see that there are two main elements, the prompt part one and then the context. For the prompt part one, you can already start typing like generate a data set or sales and transactions. And then just type enter. As you can see, in matter of seconds, Copilot will be generating this data set for us. Now, in case that you want to provide some context for this formula, then you just need to do it after the first part of the formula. And I'll be explaining to you exactly how to do that. So let's imagine that we want to have the top five drivers of variance versus budget. So I have my formula ready in here, but I haven't put the equal sign. Now, when I put the equal sign, you will see that my formula is equal copilot and then identify top five drivers of variance versus budget for enterprise for January. And I want to see what is that variance. And then as you see here, I'm giving a pilot the context of my table. Now, when I click enter, now this formula would appear below. In this case, I had the error spill and it was because Copilot needed some space to do the full formula and I have the other use case down there. But then as you can see, now in here, it is identifying these top drivers. Now let's try it with one more formula. So in here, I want to summarize the key performance highlights for enterprise in February. So again, I have my formula there. So I'll just type equal Copilot and then I'm just giving it this data set. So I can select in there, as you can see, from month and then all the way here and select either all the table or if I just, if I don't want the whole table, I could also select, let's say, B2 to L49. Now in here, let me, just fix this part, yep. In here, as you can see, it starts saying that it's busy because it's thinking with Copilot. And then now it's giving us the summary. Let's go to a couple more use cases and then explain the basics of Copilot. I will be giving you this Excel file as well with the data set and all of the prompts in here for you to test. One important thing is that I am taking out the equal sign before the word Copilot so that the formulas don't recalculate. Now, this is important because as I put here in the homepage, there are usage limits for Copilot. As for now, the function is only available to users with a Copilot subscription. So you would go home and then see Copilot, the typical Copilot in here, for example. And you can also calculate only up to 100 Copilot functions every, one, every 10 minutes. Now, the function cannot calculate in workbooks that are labeled confidential or highly confidential. That's also important to note. It does require an internet connection to access all of the different AI models. 
and right now it's only having access to the data that we have provided in the context as I did on the variance analysis. So it doesn't have access to all of the other data sets inside our workbook. It also doesn't have access to information from the internet. As for today, that it's the 8th of September, the compiler function, it is using the model for OpenAI, GPT 4.1 mini, um, as I'm adding in here in the Excel file as well. Now, one more important thing is that there are certain times that I would recommend for you to use compiler function. So, for example, for generative and exploratory tasks, such as summarizing text, generating sample data, classifying or tagging content, or generate text. But if you want to use numerical calculations, such as, let's say, sum or average, then I would recommend you to do those formulas. So like sum, average, and so on, instead of compilers. And also whenever you need to access recent or real-time data. Now, let's go to more use cases. One important one that I really like is the risk of opportunities. So let's say that you have a table such as this, where you have months, business units, category, products, and so on. You can also even have the variance versus budgets and versus prior year as well. But now let's imagine that we want to classify this row as a risk or an opportunity. Again, I have my formula here, so I'll just do equal compiler. And then now I'm classifying based on this data of this row, if this is a risk or an opportunity. I can then just drag the formula down and it will do the same formula, but now with this context in here. Again, I will remove the equal sign so that you can get this Excel file with all the formulas, but it doesn't need to recalculate one time and one time. Now, let's imagine that you have also to work with accounts payable. And you have a data set like this with vendor, invoices, dates, net terms, if it has been paid, and so on. I have in here three different examples that you can use. Again, with the first one, then I am giving it to compiler the context of this line. And I want it to tag this invoice as urgent or routine and even investigate based on aging days, etc. Now, in here, you can see that it tagged as origin, for example. Now, in this one, I want it to draft a concise and polite payment status email to the vendor referencing the invoice, due date, and ending. Again, I add the formula, and as you can see here, then it generated the whole email for us. I'm doing it a bit bigger so that you can see the subject, your cloud, I hope this message finds you well, and so on and so on. And it's referencing this data from here. So that invoice, that vendor, and so on. Now the, fir the third use case for accounts payable that I want to show you is this one. So in here, again, equal product, and why one it is to summarize the top reasons the invoices are overdue. So in this case, I'm giving it the whole table as context. So I hit enter, and then now, as you can see, it generates an array. So per each of the vendors is generating the category, the top reason, and the recommended action. Let's go to the next use case. Now, this one, as I was showing at first, it's also one of my favorites. It was a lot of times in order to demonstrate different functions and different use cases in finance, I need to create data sets. And in here with this formula, I can just tell Copilot as I add a data set for an FPD team of a bureau company to do a forecast of sales by business unit. And it will generate the whole data set for me. 
So you can see in here, I have months, business units, sales, revenue, price, promotions, and so on. This is very handy whenever you need some dummy data to test a lot of those different AI tools out there. So again, I'll leave it feed for you in here. Now, one more thing in here. If you want to generate a budget memo, for example, and you have category line items, budget amount, actuals, and the balances, you can do equal compiler and then write a short memo to the department heads explaining the Q3 budget variance. Again, I'm giving it the context, as context, the whole table. So B2 to F11. I click enter. And then now it will be generating the whole email. Again, I just need to do this to see the whole thing that is written. And this text, for example, I can just do copy and then control alt uh, in order to do values and then V, for example. Okay. And I will have the whole thing as text. Again, okay. here. So I can just copy it and paste it into my outlook. One more is to categorize transactions. So in here, if you have different transactions from different vendors, and then you want to categorize them very quickly, then again, you can just do equal pilot tell to categorize. And then the first one would be travel, for example, but the second one looks more like office supplies, for example, in this case. So it generates also that for us. Now, this is a tricky one, but I think it's a very useful one. So it can also generate Python code for us. Now, it cannot use it straight away if you use the compiler formula, but it can generate it and then you can just copy and paste it into a Python um, cell. So let's say in here, I'm telling it compiler and then use Python code to generate a heatmap. Now, as you see here, it's generating this Python code. Now, this will be different than the one that I have, and that's one important note as well. So Copilot is using ChatGPT 4.1, that it's a probabilistic model. So every time that we prompt it with something like this, it will generate new information. So in this case, new code. Now, this code, then you can just, again, paste it here as values, that I, did, that I did there. And then you need to go here and select everything. And then in another cell, let's say here, you need to open then a Python cell by typing equal py. I have done some videos on that as well and then paste it, control enter. And then what this will do is will be uh, doing the heat map for us. As you can see, it says now image in there and I need to do right click, picture and cell and create reference to show it. Again, quite important is that I have now my heat map in here by department. So this is another use case of Compile. Similarly, I have the same thing here for cohort analysis. So again, multi-steps. So in here, I am asking Compile generate Python code to create a cohort analysis based on this data. It looks like that. Then again, I copy and paste the code somewhere else and then type it into a Python cell in order to generate this cohort analysis. I'll be giving you also in the description of this video, my videos around how to use Python in Excel. So that you can learn a little bit more about what these data frames um, stand for and are and how to use them. But bear in mind that now with the Copilot formula, you can generate the Python code directly here in the cells. I have a couple more. So in this one is a journal entry controls. And let's say that you have different journal entries 
and you can use a padlock to, let's say, rail bees as high, low, or, or medium risk, and explain why. It can also check if it's meeting, let's say, the general entry policy and why. So now the preparing approver are the same person, for example, and even to create a mountain narrative with the whole as founders. Then this one, again, will be typing and type of email. So as you can see, a very big text in there. Now, again, I'll remove the equal signs so that you can get this Excel file. And you just need to do equal, compile it, and then it will be running. And one more, if you need to do sentimental analysis, let's say of customer feedback, then again, equal pilot, and then you have all of this very big feedback, but then I just want to translate it into a couple of sentences. Similarly, you can just drag this formula down, and then now it will be having the context of the cell below. I leave you in the last tab of the Excel, other 30 ideas on how to use this new copilot formula. Thank you so much for watching and see you the next time.